everyone. Today we'll be covering probability and statistics for the FE exam, and we'll be specifically looking at normal distributions or Gaussian distributions. This is the usual bell curve you're probably familiar with. So we can see we have a problem here, and in the problem they do specify that we're following a normal distribution. Generally that will be specified in, in the problem, but if it's not, if there is no distribution specified, normal is probably a good assumption to make. We could see from the problem here that they tell us we have a mean of 8.5%, so that's our mu value. And our standard deviation they also give us, that's our sigma value. And then of course we're going in a range here, and these are common problems you'll see. These are the most difficult of the normal distribution problems when you have a range. So it's asking what's above 12%, or below 3%. So it's not what's between 3 and 12%, it's what's outside of those boundaries. So if we draw this out as a bell curve, and we assume that our mean is here in the middle, 8.5, and you know we're just going to approximate this. Let's say 12 is here, 3 is here. We're looking at these sections here, these external sections, not the range between 3 and 12. So we can go to our reference manual. This is pulled directly from the reference manual and it tells us it's in the normal distribution section. It tells us how to handle these types of problems. So we see we need to find a, a transform value z and z is an x value minus our mu value over sigma. So we're going to need two of these, right, because we have two z's. We have a z of 12. So in that case x is 12 minus 8.5 over 3, and we need one for the 3 value, which is going to be 3 minus 8.5 over 3. So if we plug this into the calculator, 12 minus 8.5 divided by 3, we're going to get about 1.6 remainder, or we'll use uh, 1.2, 1.16, sorry, so we'll use 1.2. And then if we do 3 minus 8.5 divided by 3, we'll end up with negative 1.83, and we'll use approximately negative 1.8. So now we have our two z values, and we can go to the end of that reference section, and you'll see that there's a normal distribution table. So I'll remind you again, z of 12, 1.2, z of 3, negative 1.8. So we're looking for everything that's greater than z of 12. So if we're looking at our bell curve, if 12 is somewhere over here, we're looking for everything greater than that point. So if we look, we see that that's the r of x case, right? The diagram matches what we're looking for. And x is going to be 1.2. So we're going to go down to this row. Now the trickier one is for z is, or rather uh, the value uh, less than z of 3. So now what we want is we want everything less than that 3 term. Now the tough part here is that if we look at f of x, right, which matches our diagram, that's everything less than. We don't have any negative values for x. x is negative 1.8. So we actually can't use our f of x because we can't plug in a negative x value and find the f of x. What we have to do in this problem is we have to realize that there's symmetry about the bell curve. So if we're looking for a negative value, we can use the inverse, we can use the positive value. So if we're looking for everything that's less than negative 1.8 as an x, we can use everything that's greater than positive 1.8. Because those values, if it's somewhere over here, this value will be equivalent if our 0 is down the middle, will be equivalent to the less than negative value. So these two are the same as each other. So 
if we're worried about that, we're going to look at positive 1.8, and we're going to look again at r of x. So these are this is the column that we're worried about. So here I've just done a little splice, and I've only considered the rows that we care about from that table. So again, we're looking at 1.2 and 1.8, and we're looking only at r of x. So our 1.2 value is 0 0.1151, just reading directly from the table. And our 1.8 value is going to be 0 0.0359. So our total value is going to be the sum of these two because we want to know what is greater than that 1.2 or less than negative 1.8. So our total then is going to be 0 0.4741. And that's your solution. So to go back to the original problem, what is the probability that a sample of a product will have a sulfur content above 12% or below 3%? The probability is going to be 47.41% or 0.4741. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you could reach out for personal tutoring. Like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop and comment with suggestions for future topics.